the way that we typically sequence things at the, at the clinic is we start off with two weeks on diet and lifestyle, and then we layer on top of that some sort of supplemental intervention, usually triple therapy. And when what we're doing the enhanced data collection is we're just inverting that order. And there was, you know, we really went back and forth. We want to make sure not to compromise patient outcomes for data collection. That's very important. But the more I thought about it and the more our clinical team went back and forth on this, we wanted to see would people do better with the dietary changes because we're front loading them with a therapy that will make them less reactive. And yeah. they might be able to get away with more liberty on a low FODMAP diet, let's say, and they don't have to be quite as strict. So we felt it to be ethically justifiable. And so we're in, in certain cohorts, we're just flipping the order. Um, so it's the, the pro back intervention first, followed by some dietary and lifestyle changes. But we, but we do try as a general rule to parse the therapeutics and not start too many at one time, just so we can learn from a individual system. I mean, sure, if we have someone do eight things, there's a high chance they're going to get better. But what we lose there is, well, what were the main drivers for you? And that's really important because we want to pick out the two or three things that really move the needle for someone so that if they do have a regression, we know what worked. And it's not, oh, well, a year later, you were traveling and not sleeping a lot and eating bad food and your guts regressed. All we have is the eight things again. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's nice about the little bit more of uh, the tortoise approach, I guess you could say. Yeah. And I think that's really helpful as well because, you know, a lot of times in functional medicine, we'll just put people on eight, nine supplements right off the bat because they have these nutrient deficiencies. You know, we're trying to support their immune system. And so it's like, okay, you need all these supplements right here. And as they're getting better, we don't really know which of the, which of those is making the biggest impact. Yeah. It's a tough balance, right? Cause you want yeah. to get people well as quickly as possible. But I would say there's also, especially for new clinicians. And, and when I was early in practice, I felt this pressure. You're like, Oh my God, I want to get this person well as quickly as possible. <laughs> I'll use this and that. And the other thing, and you end up just being way too test and supplement heavy. One of my, one of my friends uh, jokingly sent me a, like a hand drawn graph. He called it the Hedberg Ruscio competency index. And the more tests and supplements one use, the lower their competence was. So uh, yeah. I don't, I don't mean that you know to knock anyone, but I do think as you get more experienced, you use less tests, you you use less supplements, and part of that's just being more precise. But part of it's also having the confidence, not feeling like you have to be so heavy-handed with all the things that you use. Yeah, that's good. And so, what was the time frame that you're using with this study as well? four weeks on the probiotic. We were doing six weeks for a while and we felt that that was probably too long. Yeah. So we, we've shortened the interval to four weeks and, and usually we'll do about four weeks on an intervention and then check back in and see how someone's doing. So four, four weeks and you're doing pre post SIBO breath tests. And then you're also doing like a symptom questionnaire. Yeah. We're doing an IBS uh, VAS visual analog yeah. scale. And this is something that we wanted to use what's known as a Likert score. And we actually, we checked in with Mark Pimentel on this and one of the things I learned and huge credit to him for having a really deep research savvy is that with a small sample size, it's very hard to demonstrate significance with a Likert score, mm -hmm. whereas a visual analog scale, like a one to 10 works much better and will have much better power in a smaller sample size, which we're hoping to have maybe 25 people or so. Oh, that's great. And when do you guys expect to publish this? Uh, and that's, that's much harder <laughs> to answer because, you know, we're, we're also learning with data collection that, the systems are really important. If we, if we have too much for a patient to fill out, the follow-up rate's pretty poor. So um, it, it depends on if we go for a small case series, like a six or four patient case series, or if we want to try to reach for what's known as a retrospective chart review, where we would probably need about 20 people. So depending on when we do our next kind of debriefing of the data that we have and, and how, how good of a follow-through that we're getting, we'll either push forward for the RCR, or we'll just do the, the smaller case series write up. So I'm hoping within six months, I'd say worst case scenario, maybe a year.